in the case of the microprocessor, Intel set up to do memory. And the major customers for memory would be the large computer companies. They tended to be relatively conservative and very concerned about reliability. So before they would adopt a new technology, it had to be well proven. And so what semiconductor companies do, and faced with a situation like that, do a specific job for one customer on the idea that as soon as you can make a part for him, he's going to buy it, and very likely buy it in volume. Our first such customer was a Japanese calculator company that sold, had a number of names, but sold calculators under the name Busycom. And Intel agreed to make LSI for their calculators as of April of 1969, so the company was less than a year old, probably just about six months old. And then two months later, an engineering team arrived from Japan to actually bring the requirements for this chipset to Intel. And by this time, I knew a bit about Intel's capabilities, and I became rather concerned that the chipset that was being proposed was quite a bit more complex than we had been led to believe in the April meeting. So I took my concerns to Bob Noyce, who I reported to at that time, and he suggested, well, if there's anything you think you could do to make it easier for Intel, you know, why don't you try to pursue it? Bob encouraged me to do my own work in that area, and there were a number of areas that looked to me like they were places that could, could make um, some significant change. And again, this was a series of small steps in trying to improve the Busycom design that finally led to the microprocessor. Little changes, one at a time, added up to what ultimately became the 4004, the first microprocessor.